is the water line from the street to the house was broken. Now, the investor who had it was in Los Angeles when I found out from his realtor. I said, well, so what's the deal on this property? He said, well, he got, you know, 80% through the rehab and he went broke and he's got to get rid of it. He's got to dump it. And I thought, huh, you're the listing agent? Thank you for that tip. He won a 17, almost 18,000? Well, I'm only going to give him 15 now. And he, so we offered him 15 and got to get back. Well, yeah, I'll whatever, get out of this. So we got it. Well, you know, the pipe alone from Rotor Rooter was like 2,500 bucks. So I told my contractor, let's both get on Craigslist, let's keep beating the price down. It's got to be a licensed plumber. They've got to work with the city. So we got it all the way down to 900. Done. That's it. Well, that's my job. That's, and my team, my contractors. We've got to beat the prices down. We've got to get it, you know, in there. Now, are the houses, like, beautiful when we're done? They're red ready. This isn't an extreme makeover. It's just right. right. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, you want to give this to her? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Marita, you're going to be speaking? Yes. Okay, so Marita's going to be speaking. We're going to get a lot from her. Lending, private lending, institutional lender. Okay. So, you know, it, we're just getting to the point where we can rent them. You probably wouldn't get through Section 8. You know, this particular property, we've still got to go back and do some garage doors on, but the tenant said, yeah, I'll take it the way it is. We had tenants that said, oh, I don't have a washer, I don't have a dryer, I don't have a refrigerator, I don't have an oven. I need all that. And I said, I don't think, you know, I'll get back to you on that, okay? And then we finally got tenants that said, I got everything I need, and I don't even care about the garage, just keep me in there. Great. Okay. So that's the game. We've got to get these things in there for you know, as little as possible. We're not going to get these numbers if I don't do my job. And I'm not going by anything but these numbers. You know, you can look at these properties and go, oh God, I'd never live in that. That's how I felt when I started off and I realized 18% is the same for that property as it would be if you did something here at Fest Parkers. You know, maybe I can get some little chin. Bid out and get 18%, I don't know, but yes. Rent ready. What's the lapse of time between its being rehabbed and then renting? What it is. When we close escrow, we rehab that place and got rid of it in 30 days. <coughs> I've got a property from a deal back in Ohio that happened two and a half, almost three years ago, from a guy that came in and spoke to our club here, and I'm getting a lot better at scrutinizing these people because he was like a three-time loser in jail, and he had a lawyer down south that was crooked, and you know, 80 to 100 people got ripped off by these people, and I was one of them too, and we just got approved by the city today. Three years? Three years of sat empty as we played the game with the city. I promise you, I will never get another condemned house. I had no idea it was condemned, but I was stupid and I was green. And they said, oh, well, we do everything. We're even your title agency. Uh, Tessie goes, no, don't do that. <laughs> you know, that's a big red flag. So in any case, I learned some lessons along the road of what to do and what not to do. So, uh, you know, Make sure that everything's legal, that they're not condemned homes, and that we can get these things uh, going as soon as possible. Yes, Robert? I think we should get the garage doors fixed before the winter snow starts. Well, that's what she said. That was the promise. And thank you for, uh, you know, being on that. Because December, when it starts to snow in places like Fort Wayne, Indiana, they want to be able to at least get into the garage with their car. And so that's the plan. We are going to do that. And Robert, you know, I said, did you get your check for rent? He goes, yeah. And I said, you happy? He goes, you know, I'm so happy, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do my next one with you. So, thank you. It comes in uh, by November, I guess, and then it will not pay off before. He's like, that's what you asked for. I'll get that money before uh, November. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a tough job, it really is. And I can't tell you, we've, we had somebody who was a member. He, you know, and his wife was a nurse and went out and bought about seven properties in Los Angeles through some big guru that said, we can show you how to do this with no money down. Man, you got big mortgage payments with no money down, the market drops off, and you can't cover that rent. What happened? He lost all those properties. And I think he may have lost his own house because he took money out of the house to go get those properties. This is a dangerous game. And that's why I finally got fed up and I said, I'm tired of what's happening with these lenders and these banks and all this stuff that's going on. I want to do cash deals. I want to protect people. 
I want to make sure they get a good return, and I don't want to have to worry about whether they can qualify. You got the worst credit in the world and still do this, and never have to worry about a mortgage payment. So basically, that's the deal. Um, yeah. Are they all in Indiana? No, no, no. I do properties anywhere. Uh, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Chattanooga. Uh, Chattanooga. <laughs> And in fact, Carl's doing very much of what I'm doing. People have said to me, well, aren't you concerned about, you know, people learning what you do in the competition? Personally, I think I could only handle about 30 or 40 of these properties. And once I was getting, let's just say 300 a month, some will rent for six, some will rent for eight. But let's say it was 300. If I did 40, that's about $12,000 a month of income. I couldn't manage much more than that because it's a lot of work. I would try to do 200, and I don't want to hire on a bunch of people because two things happen. The quality goes down because they're not doing what I would do. And secondly, your ROI is going to go down because they've got to be paid, right? I'd much rather just be happy with what I'm making and say, hey, do you want to do this? Be my guest. I'll show you how. I'm, my kids are, my daughter's out there. She's going, Dad, I want to do this. My son's going, Dad, I want to do this. You know, I've got a lot of people who want to do it. And I go, you know, one person right now that's going through school, and he says, I'm just going to refer people to you. Can I get $500 for every referral? And if that person buys 10 properties, I'm going to give you 500 10 times on that same thing. But, you know, there's only so much a person can do, and that's why people go into bankruptcy. They just get too strung out. You try and do a full-time job, and you try and do this real estate stuff, you're going to either lose your full-time job or the real estate or both. Believe me, I've been hiding in bathrooms with my cell phone going, the boss is closed, i got to go. <laughs> it's no fun. It is no fun. And I'm so glad you passed me on that. Seriously. Yes? Do you have a team at all these places? I have a team at all these places. And what happens if somebody comes to me and says, Dan, I like the idea, I like the concept, but I don't like where you're doing it, and I really want to go to New Mexico, I would say, no problem. I'll build a team there. Where do you want to go in New Mexico? But I want to make sure, number one, it's low insurance, it's low taxes, and it's investor-friendly, not tenant-friendly. California is tenant-friendly. Yeah. And if somebody yeah. squats in your property, it might take six months to get out of there. I'm not going to make these numbers playing that game, and I'm not going there. I've got a rental in town. And, you know, some of these rentals I manage and some I don't. It all depends on my teams and what's going on. I have a rental in town that I have in the hands of a property management company. Imagine that. It's like, Dan, you live right there. Why don't you do it? There are reasons. I have my reasons. I mean, the last time I went through a transition, the people that moved in said, hey, we can paint, we can clean it up, we'll do all this stuff. And they gave me a price and my property management company came back and said, we can get people to do it like half that much. They say they saved me about five or $6,000 off of that one decision alone. That's enough to pay them for a whole year. My wife said, well, we need to get rid of them. Let's give them another year. <laughs> they earned it. They deserve it. I'll probably keep them anyway. So it just depends. Okay? You had a question? Yeah, well, you mentioned some of the criteria. You're also looking at things like um, employment statistics or proximity maybe to a healthy military base. And yeah. School districts. Yeah, I look at all that, but let me show you something else. Let's just go take a quick look if I can get over to, uh, let's just go take a look at the three page thing here. I want to show you something that probably not too many of you are checking out. And there's a reason for this that I do this. This is the three page document on Google. Okay. Oops. So if we go down and we take a look at, okay, here it is. Imagine this. Imagine I get people who are on Section 8, and Section 8 is paying their rent every month in the bank. It goes to automatic deposit to the bank. I don't ever have to worry about it. And then I come along and go, gee, Section 8 is paying six or $800 a month of your rent. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that you can actually apply for a loan at a place called NACA? Okay. Anybody in here seen NACA? Okay. 3.625 percent. No down payment. No closing costs. Two percent. She is down at two percent for the life of the loan. Interest rate cut by more than three quarters. There's a happy lady. She's happy. Okay. She just got this loan where she didn't have to come out of her pocket with a dime. No closing costs. Nothing. 
She's qualified for a loan. She may not even be on Section 8. I don't know. But imagine if they were on Section 8 and they got qualified. They don't even care about credit. They say, we're going to deal on income to debt ratio and we're going to spend four to six months and when we get their income to debt ratio to the right place, we're going to qualify them for a loan. Now, guess what happens when they get qualified for the loan? And it takes a bit of work with these people because that's my job is to spend time educating these people and working with them and motivating them and everything I can do. I say, guess what we're going to do now with Section 8? We're going to take this little piece of paper that says you're qualified. We're going to go back to Section 8 and say, hey, they're qualified to buy this house. You want to make the mortgage payment? You ever heard of Section 8 making people's mortgage payment? Guess what? They do it all day long. And you know why? Why? Wouldn't they rather pay, with that kind of loan, they're going to pay $300 a month instead of six, or $400 instead of eight. Wouldn't Section 8 rather pay half mm -hmm. than all? Yes. And they're not obligated to pay anything. If those kids grow up, <laughs> Section 8 come back and say, hey, you know, your kids are growing up, they're gone, now it's your responsibility. We did it for 10 years, it's your responsibility. What are the odds of if they go through this process and they buy this house that they're going to worry too much about she has kind of close to retail value, isn't it? Are you paying for it? Ten years down the road, what's it going to be worth? Most of these people are going to go, wow, I don't pay for it, I don't care, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we're waking up. So that's it, you know. Um, that's a tough thing to do. It takes a lot of work. And again, if you've got a full-time job, you know, how are you going to spend time dealing with that? You know? But it's a possibility. So those are the things that I do. And that's, you know, has to do somewhat with the areas like you asked him about, okay? So, I don't want to spend too much more time on this because there's a lot of other people who need to speak, but I just want to you know, give you a quick idea. You can get to that from the websites. It's all up there. All the, and I will continue to modify those three pages and add things to it. So when you get a chance, look at it. And look at it from two standpoints. One, do I want to do this? Or two, do I want to do this as in, I want to make this my life and my job? I don't care, you know. If you just take it and run with it, you don't ever do anything with me. I don't care. What are you doing? You're helping the economy get back. You're helping people. You know, in my opinion, they should have taken all the money they gave to the banks and everything else and just made these really low income loans that they could actually make assumable and give to the people who really need it and put everybody to work. That would have been, in my opinion, a lot better thing to do. But, what do we got? <laughs> so, um, elected. Not elected. Not elected. Yeah, I don't want to go there either. <laughs> okay, so I want to thank you very much for listening to my uh, spiel. We're going to have uh, Marina come up. Thank you very much. Marina, do you have uh, anything you want to plug in, like a memory stick or?